Hello and welcome back to another out of spec detailing video today at Clear Detailing. We've got a Rivian R1T with the highly anticipated Ocean Coast interior. I was quite surprised when I got this truck in to see how dirty the seats were already considering this only has 1100 miles on it. So I'm gonna show you how to clean the Ocean Coast interior and protect it for years to come. Um, the big thing with kind of this lighter interior is worrying about stains if you have dogs in and out of here or if you wear a lot of blue jeans, um, getting in and out of these seats can leave some dye transfer um, on there from your actual blue jeans. So I'm gonna show you the whole process on how to coat your Rivian R1T or R1S Ocean Coast interior. Let's jump in here and see what 1100 miles looks like on the Ocean Coast interior. Coming over here, starting just on this armrest, already noticing quite a bit of dirt and grime here, some staining here, really, really high impact area that gets a lot of wear and tear. Um, just for your knowledge, this is a vegan interior. What does that mean? So we're not using leather products in this. This is essentially a vinyl material, so a synthetic leather, in my opinion, wears a lot better, looks a lot better. It's a lot easier to clean. So I really, really like this. The problem with that is on these lighter interiors, they do tend to show quite a bit of stuff. So coming here already on the side bolster, check this out. So we've got a lot of gene transfer here, already some dirt and grime here. You can actually see kind of in the grain, the difference in color, especially here on this edge, you can see how it's quite a bit lighter and then it goes a lot darker. So just general dirt and grime already accumulating on here. Same with this area, we're gonna get this cleaned up. It'll look so much better and then we're gonna get it protected. But even over here, we've just got some general stains everywhere. I'm quite surprised actually to see how dirty this already is. Um, over here, another high impact area point. So they chose to go white on this. I would really like this to be black because your elbow's always sitting on this. It looks nice, but already picking up so much dirt and grime. Now, the big thing here, let's talk leather cleaners. So this is Gion Strong. You can use Gion Mild, which I would normally probably recommend for this interior since it's not super filthy, um, but it definitely has a little bit of dye transfer. I don't have the mild on me today, so we're gonna be using the strong. Now, important to note that this setup here is made to all work together. So if you're using other leather cleaners, what those are going to do is maybe even leave a foam behind, if not some UV protection, which is not gonna let the Gion Leather Shield actually physically bond and wear and last as long as it should. So I'm gonna jump in here and show you the process of how to clean these seats and get them protected. Let's talk tools needed for this project. This is a fantastic project for you DIY guys or professional detailers alike, um, but let's kind of jump in here. So first off again, we've got our leather cleaner strong. I'm actually finding, I did a few test areas. Look at the difference of this seat here, how much brighter and white this is versus kind of really dull and almost a little yellow and grimy on that side. Um, you also have a brush here. So this is actually a brush like you would use for lug nuts, but I cut them down to give a little bit more stiffer bristle here so I can kind of get in those cracks. This right here is also another leather cleaning brush. It's a little bit stronger bristle than this, um, but it's specifically made for interiors. And again, talking about this, a leather cleaner is okay to use on vinyl seats. I really, really recommend buying this because it's specifically made to use with the actual ceramic coating. Again, talking about that, if you're using other leather cleaners, they may try to leave some sort of UV protectant on there, which is not gonna let the coating do its work. Lastly is a nice microfiber towel. These are kind of cheap ones that I buy in big, big bulk um, situations because on interiors, I like to use one towel per interior, multiple towels, and then throw them away. I don't like mixing it. I find that's quite gross, um, but nonetheless, it's pretty easy to do here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna clean this side up now. I've just sprayed this down, letting the solution get to work. I would not want to do the entire seat. Um, the reason being that it can start drying up here, it can get splotchy and kind of nasty, and you also do not want to saturate it. Really surprised, hopefully that's coming through on camera, the difference in color here already cleaned and then still dirty. So what I'm gonna come do here is agitate, and you can notice it's kind of foaming up a little bit. 
Um, that's the cleaner getting into those pores, unlocking that trapped dirt in there. It's a very, very simple process. If you need a little bit more on here, you can come in here with your little bit stiffer bristled brush. You're gonna have a wet side, so I like to wipe it down one way first, and then have a dry side flipping it over. It is literally as simple as that. I like working in small sections. Again, don't drench the whole seat. Want to be cautious on these perforated seats. You don't want to get this super saturated so that it seeks down into um, the actual seat here. This is another area I already did as a test spot. Look at the difference in coloration here. This has dried for a few minutes, but really, really nice cleanup here. And while we're talking about the armrest, let, I wanna make a quick note on this. So we've got this natural grain wood here. I wanna be very mindful that I'm not spraying on here, getting this saturated. Really, really important to do. So what you may do is come in here, spray it a little gently inside here, and then spray a little on your brush if need be, and then come in here and agitate. But you definitely do not wanna be getting this soaking wet on that wood. The thing I also really like about this Gion cleaner is that when your interior does get dirty within the next couple of months after you've coated your seats, this cleaner is safe to use um, kind of in tandem with the ceramic coating. So it's not gonna strip it off. Um, maybe would recommend having the mild version for that. So not the super strong one, but it's so, so simple to clean um, vinyl like this and leather as well. But this is just extremely nice. Look how that came back. Really, really liking that. So what I would recommend doing is cleaning everything first. Let it all dry and then come back and start your ceramic coating process. spent some time off camera cleaning the whole back seats, all the front seats, all the armrests. We are ready to go, looking really nice. Actually, how it should be looking. One important note, you need to make sure that everything is dry before you start applying the ceramic coating. So that's why I said I would clean everything first, make sure everything's ready to go, let everything dry, and then come in and ceramic coat it. Let's talk about what this product is, what it does, what it doesn't do. So this is Gion Leather Shield. Now what this is going to do is provide a actual ceramic coating that is made specifically for leather and vinyl surfaces um, to repel dirt, to repel liquids, and most importantly, help in um, dye transfer of jeans, pants, anything like that. What this is not going to do is make your leather stiff, so it's a flexible coating. What it's also not going to do is make it shiny. This is a very um, satin look on here, so you're not going to have this ultra glossy interior. I absolutely hate interiors that are sticky, um, sticky and overly shiny. Really not good in my opinion. So let's get this box cracked open and see what comes inside. So inside here we have the actual ceramic coating. This is 50 mils of it here. We also have coating applicators. Now I'm gonna talk about these because I don't love these being extremely dark um, suede cloths here. I always worry about having these once a liquid is added to it, transferring a little bit of that coloration. I'm gonna use another applicator, but typically what you would do if you're not worried about that, you would take this applicator, pour a few drops on here, come in here working in straight lines and small sections like so. You would let it dry for a few minutes and then you would come back and wipe all the residue off and your seat is ceramic coated. It's really a simple process and I like that Gion's made this kit. This is perfectly fine for you to come in here, buy this kit directly like this and use it on your seats. I do, again, I worry a little bit about these extremely dark colored suede applicators transferring any sort of tint or anything into the seats. 
went and grabbed one of my favorite applicators here. So this is actually the same applicators I use on the paint outside, as well as all the trim, all of my ceramic coating goods. What I like about this, not only one, it nearly identical matches in color the interior on this side. Um, again, I'm just a little OCD about using this. I really, really don't wanna add any tint, any sort of anything in there. I don't think these will, but I'm just a little OCD. Plus, I like this applicator a lot better. Let me talk about this. I'm gonna put links in the description to all this stuff that you guys need um, below so that you can get exactly what I use. Why I really like this, there's a hydrophobic material underneath the microfiber here, which allows this coating to not soak in. So it's gonna stay only in this microfiber material here. Now, if you're using something like this, you're placing your applicator over here, what's gonna happen is all this foam here is gonna soak up a lot of coating, wasting the bottle, in my opinion, and material. So again, really straightforward process here. I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna get the camera set up here and we're gonna coat these seats. So I've actually already coated this top portion of the Rivian seat. Just wanted to test it out, make sure it's going well. Um, I'm gonna work on basically top half first and then come down and do this part and then come back and wipe this residue away. It's about three to five minutes you wanna leave this on here and then you come back in with a new microfiber towel wipe this down. The big thing here, there's a couple pieces on this Rivian seat in particular. You'll notice we've got some metal um, bezels here as well as in between the seat. You don't wanna get ceramic coating drenched on there. So just being mindful that when you're doing this, don't just slather it on here. Another thing with this leather shield, you do not wanna go in a super thick layer. Spread it on, work a little section, see how it's doing. If you need to grab a light to make sure you're hitting all the areas, perfect. That's exactly what you wanna do. Now on the bottom seat here, let me show you real time and how we do this. So this is curing again right now. I'm gonna come in here and grab this. I'm going to put just a few drops. Don't wanna oversaturate it and we're gonna work one side of the seat at a time. So I'm gonna come in here, I can already see. I'm gonna bring you guys in as well and show you um, what it looks like, kind of a close up, but this is a little bit easier. Just working this in in straight lines. This is not rocket science. It is so easy to do. The biggest thing that you guys will mess up on is if you get going too far at once. So if you try and coat all of the interior at once, come back and then this has already started to cure. Um, I wouldn't panic about it, but that's where ceramic coating issues happen. It's to where you get too far ahead of yourself and you can't catch up. So just being mindful on this, um, want to make sure that you have enough time. So again, do not go do the whole interior, come back and go, oh no. The problem with this type of coating in here is on the outside of cars, like on paint, if you get a high spot, a high spot is essentially where you didn't get all the residue wiped away after the coating has cured, um, you can buff it on the outside. On the interior, on leather, there's really nothing you can do. So you want to be mindful, go slow, work in areas that is manageable to you. Um, this has actually been sitting for about three to five minutes now. So I'm gonna come in with my fresh side. I'm gently gonna wipe this away. Already feeling that this just has a nice little layer protection and noting that it is not making this glossy. It is smooth feeling, it's definitely not slick. Um, that's a big thing that I really like about using this leather shield on interiors. So what I would do is maybe do an initial wipe down. Just getting kind of all the big areas and then come in with your second side here. I like folding these into quarters and get in more intricate areas, making sure you're not missing any of those. Again, bringing a light in here is a great idea. If you have a flashlight, um, if you have scan grip lights, going through, checking, make sure there's no high areas that are a little shinier than others. That's gonna be your biggest indication of a high spot is an area that's a little bit shinier um, than this kind of nice satin finish. But this looks extremely nice. That was an extremely easy process to do. So we've got this wiped down now. Wow, does this look nice. Nice and smooth, it's not slick, it's not shiny, retains that nice satin finish on here. And this is actually still curing over here. I wanna show you a quick kind of closer up demo here on the armrest. Now important, again, do not get this stuff on here. If you can, just be mindful, go slow on this. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how much product you need for a small area like this. So a few drops, just like that. No more is needed. Make sure you're putting the top on it. And I'm going to show you just exactly, there you can see the coating actually going on. Way easier to see it here than on the actual seats. So again, this shine is going to go away. So over here, completely coated. This is right when you coat it, and I'm gonna let this sit for three to five minutes. I'll wipe it away so you can see a coated versus uncoated after it's cured and ready to be removed. We are looking super good now. So I've got all of the front coated um, besides the driver's side armrest here. I wanna show a quick difference on that. But I coated the entire passenger seat, the entire driver's seat, both armrests on both doors, and only used about a quarter of this. So I would definitely say on a Rivian R1T, maybe not an R1S, but you could get away with doing two layers on everything. This is still curing here, as you can see. So it looks a little shiny, but it's gonna dole down and go to this really, really nice moisturized, but um, very satin surface. Here's a perfect example. You really, I couldn't even tell by looking at this which side is which. Maybe this looks slightly bit more moisturized, just a rich leather, um, but this is the uncoated and coated. Now I wanna say this is, I'm not gonna say slick because it's definitely not slick. It's smooth here and a little bit grabbier here, but it just, you can tell there's a little bit of protection on there once you start feeling it. It's not gonna be something that you're gonna be sliding out of your seat. Um, I would not personally coat a steering wheel on this. I just, I don't like the idea of that. I like to clean those, leave it alone and keep them clean. But I hope you guys really enjoy this one. I'm gonna leave all the links below to Leather Shield, the cleaner, the tools, everything you guys need for coating your Ocean Coast interior. Hope you guys really enjoyed this one. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.